Welcome to our lecture online. In this video and the next video after this, we're going to explore a certain type of problem that intertwines the conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy. The way it intertwines it is that each problem is essentially made up of two parts. Part one, where we use the conservation of momentum, and part two, where we use the conservation of energy. And the link between them is that the final velocity of part one becomes the initial velocity of part two. And I've tried to cryptically illustrate that. So the velocity final of part one of the problem now becomes velocity initial of part two of the problem. Essentially what we have here is we have a collision. Whenever there's a collision, energy is essentially never conserved, except in physics books when we talk about a perfectly elastic collision, which of course in the real world they don't exist. So we can assume that there is a collision, energy will be lost, and unless we know all the parameters of the initial velocity and the final velocity of every component in the collision, we will not know how much energy is lost in the collision. So we can only use the conservation of momentum in part one of the problem. After the collision has conserved, there will be some sort of final velocity from that collision, a block or something moving away from the collision at some final velocity relative to part one, which then becomes the initial velocity of part two. In part two, there's something that happens, such as a gain of potential energy or a loss of kinetic energy or some loss due to friction or something like that. So we know that we can track the energy equivalence across the second part of the problem. So we use the energy conservation equation where the initial energy equals the final energy and therefore we can then somehow calculate the initial velocity of part two which then becomes the final velocity of part one which then allows us to find what we're looking for. Well here's a simple illustration of that. Let's say that we have a bullet striking a block and the bullet becomes embedded in the block. So the bullet becomes embedded in the block. So essentially there's a collision here. We use the conservation of momentum. Initial momentum equals final momentum. The initial momentum is the momentum of the bullet plus the momentum of the block. Now if the block wasn't moving, it has zero momentum. So it just simply becomes the momentum of the bullet. That equals the momentum of the bullet and the block combined times its, uh, the momentum of, of the bullet and the block combined which of course is the final momentum, which also gives you the final velocity of the block in the bullet. But if they ask us to, fi to figure out the initial velocity of the bullet, we can't figure that out because we want to know the final velocity of the block in the bullet after the collision. So what we then do is to set up a second equation which then keeps the energy conserved. The energy initial equals the energy final. This is after the collision. So we know that the block and the bullet will start moving away. And let's say that they run over a rough patch on the ground where there's friction and eventually the block comes to a stop. Well, we can then say that the any work put into the system, which is zero, plus any potential energy the system had, which is zero because there's no height, plus the initial kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. So we combine the mass of the bullet and the man on the block. Now notice that this initial velocity of the second part of the problem is the same as the final velocity of the initial part of the problem. We'll get to that. Then we can see on the right side of the equation there's no potential energy because there's no height gain, there's no kinetic energy because there's no velocity anymore at the end that the block came to stop, and there's energy loss which is the, for the work to overcome friction, which is the friction force times the distance traveled. Presumably, they give us the coefficient of friction, they give us the distance traveled, and from that we should be able to find the initial velocity of part two. Let me show you how to do that here. Once we have the initial velocity of part two, that becomes the final velocity of part one. We plug it in here, and then we can solve for the initial velocity of the bullet. And so that is the process in which we go through with this type of problem, where we combine momentum and energy. Notice that this part one and part two is not to be confused by this part one here, which is part one of the video we're going to show you, and then on the next video will be part two of the video, so it's not part one, part two, not to be related to what I have up there. A second example could be where the bullet is fired and it goes right through the block and it emerges from the other side of the block at some final velocity, let's say it's 100 meters per second, and again we're trying to find the initial velocity of the bullet. Assuming that the block will slide over a rough surface with coefficient of friction, eventually come to a stop. Again, we use the conservation momentum. 
momentum initial equals momentum final. If the block wasn't moving, it does not have any initial momentum, but the mass times the velocity of the bullet initial, that is the initial momentum of the system. At the end, both the block and the bullet will be moving to the right, so each of them will have momentum, the momentum of the bullet and the momentum of the block. Since we know the velocity of the bullet at the end, and we don't know the velocity of the block at the end, we then have to use the second equation to figure that out. So we use the energy conservation equation. Again, energy initial equals energy final. There's no work put into the system, no potential energy because there's no height gained. Initial kinetic energy is one half m, only the block, because the bullet is flying off on its own. So one half m times the velocity of the block initial squared. Now notice that this velocity block of initial square for the second part of the problem is the same as this final block of velocity after the collision. This is the same velocity. So the initial velocity of the second part of the problem will become the final velocity of the first part of the problem. On the right side of the equation, no potential energy, no kinetic energy, energy lost due to friction, which is the friction force times distance. If we solve this equation for the V initial of the block, V block initial, we get this expression right here. We take that, we plug that in here, and now we can solve for V block initial, since we already know that the final velocity of the block was given to us. And so that is how we solve a momentum energy combination problem. We'll show you a few more examples, and then at that point, hopefully, we get the hang of that. And that is how it's done.